Hello there, welcome to BBC News. I'm Rich Preston. Our top stories. A fire at a Rohingya refugee camp in Bangladesh destroys shelters, leaving thousands of people homeless. Clashes between Greek police and protesters angry at last week's fatal train crash. The Prime Minister asks for forgiveness. The government needs to change the way they think. They need to start caring about our lives. This must never happen again. A BBC investigation uncovers evidence that Twitter is no longer able to protect users from trolling following layoffs and changes under Elon Musk. Why are these accounts that are bullying and harassing people still allowed on the platform? I would like him to read some of the messages that I've been sent. Prince Harry and Meghan's team say they have been invited to the King's coronation, but won't confirm whether the royal couple will attend. And this year's Oscars feature a record number of nominees of Asian heritage. We've been speaking to one hopeful about their special recognition. I was just hoping that the movie gets finished and that people watch it. And so the fact that we've come all, all the way this far has been so um, exciting. Hello there, a very warm welcome to the programme. And we begin today's show with coverage of a huge fire in Bangladesh, which has destroyed about 2,000 shelters at a Rohingya refugee camp in the southeast of the country. Officials say the blaze has been brought under control, but around 12,000 people have been left homeless at the camp in Cox's Bazaar and have nowhere to go. Our correspondent Ambarasan Etarajan reports. Let's take a look at some of the day's other stories now. Initial results from Estonia's general election suggest victory for the Prime Minister Kaja Kallis and her Reform Party. With most of the ballots counted, it secured about a third of the votes. The election was dominated by Estonia's stance on the war in Ukraine. Pakistan's former Prime Minister Imran Khan has been barred from making speeches on the country's national television. Pakistan's media regulator accused Mr Khan of repeating baseless allegations against state institutions and spreading hate speech. He says the allegations are politically motivated. And Hugo Chavez has been remembered by Venezuelans 10 years after his death. There were rallies throughout the country while top government figures attended the main event in the capital Caracas, as did international allies, including a high-level delegation from Cuba. His successor Nicolas Maduro has seen near economic collapse and the departure of 5 million people for a life elsewhere. Now, current and former staff at Twitter have told the BBC's Panorama programme that the company is no longer able to protect users from online abuse following mass sackings and changes under the new owner Elon Musk. Exclusive academic research and testimony from Twitter users supports their claims, suggesting abuse is thriving under Mr Musk's leadership. Our social media and disinformation correspondent Mariana Spring has this report. OK, Joe Watkins joining us from New York. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks, Rich. Do stick with us here on BBC News. Still to come, we speak to one of the record number of Asian Heritage nominees hoping to win an Oscar next Sunday. Hello there, you're watching BBC World News, our top stories this hour. A fire at a Rohingya refugee camp in Bangladesh has destroyed shelters and left thousands of people homeless. And there have been clashes between Greek police and protesters angry at last week's fatal train crash. The Prime Minister has asked for forgiveness. Now, an historic agreement to protect the world's oceans has been approved after more than a decade of international wrangling over funding and fishing rights. It will greatly extend environmental safeguards, which are currently confined to just over 1% of international waters. The deal was finalised at the United Nations in New York and is being hailed as a significant step by campaigners. Our science correspondent Palab Ghosh has this report. 
Oscar nominee Shirley Karate speaking to Karishma Vaswani there. And we can find out how all the Oscar nominees do this time next week. That's it from us for now. I'm on Twitter at Rich Preston. Please do get in touch from all of us on the team here in London. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. Hello there, welcome to BBC News, I'm Rich Preston, our top stories. A fire at a Rohingya refugee camp in Bangladesh destroys shelters, leaving thousands of people homeless. Clashes between Greek police and protesters angry at last week's fatal train crash. The Prime Minister asks for forgiveness. The government needs to change the way they think. They need to start caring about our lives. This must never happen again. A BBC investigation uncovers evidence that Twitter is no longer able to protect users from trolling following layoffs and changes under Elon Musk. Why are these accounts that are bullying and harassing people still allowed on the platform? I would like him to read some of the messages that I've been sent. Prince Harry and Meghan's team say they have been invited to the King's coronation, but won't confirm whether the royal couple will attend. And this year's Oscars feature a record number of nominees of Asian heritage. We've been speaking to one hopeful about their special recognition. I was just hoping that the movie gets finished and that people watch it. And so the fact that we've come all, all the way this far has been so um, exciting. Hello there and welcome to the programme. We begin today's show in Bangladesh where a huge fire has destroyed about 2,000 shelters at a Rohingya refugee camp in the southeast of the country. Officials say the blaze has been brought under control but around 12,000 people have been left homeless at the camp in Cox's Bazar and have nowhere to go. Our correspondent and Barasan Etirajan has this report. Joe Watkins there speaking to me earlier on. Do stick with us here on BBC News, still to come. We speak to one of the record number of Asian Heritage nominees hoping to win an Oscar next Sunday. Hello, this is BBC World News, the latest headlines. A fire at a Rohingya refugee camp in Bangladesh has destroyed shelters and left thousands of people homeless. And clashes between Greek police and protesters angry at last week's fatal train crash. The Prime Minister has asked for forgiveness. Right, let's go to China now, which is attempting an economic bounce back after three years of tight Covid restrictions. Its citizens are now enjoying the freedom to go out and spend money after the government abandoned its zero Covid policy at the end of last year. Economic growth, as well as a big increase in military spending, were key themes at the country's once-in-a-year parliamentary session. But its annual Congress has also been used by President Xi Jinping to further consolidate his power. Our China correspondent Stephen McDonnell has this report. And you can have a look at the BBC News website for more on all our stories. There's also a full list, as you can see there, of the Oscar nominations in full. There's also a nice little feature about the film, an Irish goodbye, which is up for an Oscar, which is this time next week. You can reach me on Twitter. I'm at Rich Preston. Please do get in touch. We'd love to hear from you, from all of us on the team here in London. Thanks for your company. We'll see you next time. Bye bye.
Hello there, this is BBC News. Welcome if you're watching here in the UK or around the world. I'm Rich Preston, our top stories. A fire at a Rohingya refugee camp in Bangladesh destroys shelters, leaving thousands of people homeless. Clashes between Greek police and protesters angry at last week's fatal train crash. The Prime Minister asks for forgiveness. The government needs to change the way they think. They need to start caring about our lives. This must never happen again. A BBC investigation uncovers evidence that Twitter is no longer able to protect users from trolling following layoffs and changes under Elon Musk. Why are these accounts that are bullying and harassing people still allowed on the platform? I would like him to read some of the messages that I've been sent. Prince Harry and Meghan's team say they've been invited to the King's coronation but won't confirm whether the royal couple will attend. And this year's Oscars feature a record number of nominees of Asian heritage. We've been speaking to one hopeful about their special recognition. I was just hoping that the movie gets finished and that people watch it. And so the fact that we've come all, all the way this far has been so um, exciting. Hello there, very good to have your company. We begin today's programme in Bangladesh, where a huge fire has destroyed about 2,000 shelters at a Rohingya refugee camp in the southeast of the country. Officials say the blaze has been brought under control, but around 12,000 people have been left homeless at the camp in Cox's Bazar and have nowhere to go. Our correspondent, Ambarasan Etarajan, has this report. Civil rights activist Joe Watkins speaking to us earlier. Do stick with us here on BBC News, still to come, where you speak to one of the record number of Asian Heritage nominees hoping to win an Oscar next Sunday. Hello, this is BBC World News, our top stories this hour. A fire at a Rohingya refugee camp in Bangladesh has destroyed shelters and left thousands of people homeless. And clashes between Greek police and protesters who were angry at last week's fatal train crash. The Prime Minister has asked for forgiveness. Right, let's go to China now, which is attempting an economic bounce back after three years of Covid restrictions. Its citizens are now enjoying the freedom to go out and spend money after the government abandoned its zero Covid policy at the end of last year. Economic growth as well as a big increase in military spending were key themes at the country's once in a year parliamentary session. But its annual Congress has also been used by President Xi Jinping to further consolidate his power, as our China correspondent Stephen McDonnell reports. Shirley Karata there is speaking to Karishma Vaswani. And stay tuned to BBC News this week. Karishma speaks to more Oscars hopefuls, including Michelle Yeoh, who's already been a winner this awards season for her role in Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, which is up for 11 different awards in the Oscars next Sunday. You can have a look at the full list of the nominations at the BBC News website, bbc.com slash news, or of course, you can get it on the BBC News app. Full list up there for you to see. And of course, we'll have it on BBC News next week. You can reach me on Twitter. I'm at Rich Preston. Please do get in touch from all of us here on the team in London. Thanks very much for your company and we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Hello, the northern half of Europe set to turn much wintry, much more wintry over the next few days. 